the 2004 F1 season will always be remembered as the end of an era. This was the final season of Michael Schumacher's legendary title reign. The Ferrari driver won his fifth consecutive world title, and more importantly, his seventh world championship. Michael at the time was rewriting all of the records in the history book of Formula One. Ferrari seemed totally unstoppable in his hands, however there was one record that he did not break during that time. Back in 2004, the record for the most consecutive F1 wins was seven, set by the great Juan Manuel Fangio. Michael was on track to beat this record, however, it all went wrong in one Grand Prix. And this video, we're gonna be talking about that. This is a story of how Michael Schumacher almost won 13 races in a row. A record that surely would have stood the test of time. In 2004, the Ferrari team was the complete opposite of the modern day Ferrari team. Jean Tot and Ross Braun were at the helm of the team and their star driver, Michael Schumacher, was coming off the back of his most difficult championship win in 2003. The team struggled with the changes in 2003 and were determined to bounce back and completely obliterate the field. And that is precisely what they did. The 2004 season started in Melbourne, Australia, and Ferrari were here to make a statement, and that is exactly what they did. Ferrari scored a front row lockout with Michael Schumacher on pole position from teammate Rubens Barrichello. The gap between those two was only 0.074 seconds, however in third place was Juan Pablo Montoya for BMW Williams, and he was 0.6 seconds off of Michael Schumacher's 124.4 lap time. In the race, Schumacher led all of 58 laps and finished 13.6 seconds ahead of teammate Barrichello and 34 seconds ahead of Fernando Alonso in the Renault. This was a dominant first weekend. The second round saw the F1 Circus move to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Qualifying saw Michael Schumacher on pole position by 0.641 seconds from second place man Mark Webber in the Jaguar, in what was one of the most impressive qualifying performances of the year. In third place was teammate Rubens Barrichello, who was 0.682 seconds off his teammate Schumacher. In the race, Weber got off to one of his legendary, terrible starts and dropped down from second place down to P9 on the very first lap. This gave Schumacher the opportunity to sprint away off the line. In the end, Schumacher didn't lead every lap this time. He only led 52 of the 56 laps, but he did win the race from Montoya in second place, who was five seconds behind, and Jensen Button, who was in third, 11 seconds off of Michael Schumacher. Next up, F1 made its debut and was since become a modern day classic on the calendar. This, however, was the very first Bahrain Grand Prix. And what better way to celebrate the first race in Bahrain than to have a Ferrari front row lockout with Schumacher on pole and Rubens in second place. In the race, Schumacher this time only led 50 of the 57 laps. So it has to be said, the rest of the field is slowly starting to get an opportunity to lead a couple of laps in the Grand Prix. But in the end, Schumacher won the race. He only won it by 1.367 seconds from his teammate Rubens Barrichello, with the BAR of Jensen Button finishing in third, only 26 seconds off of the two Ferraris. So far, the season has been all Michael Schumacher. The next race, though, was the start of the European leg of the season, and this is where things were about to change. The next round was at Imola for the San Marino Grand Prix. This is the true home race of Ferrari. This is the weekend where they have to nail the entire weekend and nothing can go wrong. So what did they do? Well, in true 2022 Ferrari style, Schumacher made a very rare mistake in qualifying, almost binning it at the Variante Alta. The same chicane of course where Leclerc spun in the Grand Prix this year. But unlike Leclerc, in true Schumacher style, he managed to keep the throttle pinned down and somehow kept excellent forward momentum. But for the first time this season, he was defeated in qualifying and it was BAR's Jensen Button who scored pole position 0.258 seconds ahead of Ferrari's Michael Schumacher. In the race itself, Button got the better launch off the start than Schumacher and he led the San Marino Grand Prix. But... Something felt all too easy for Michael. Despite being behind Button, it was feeling like Michael was very comfortable being sat behind him, and that it was just a matter of time before Michael would be in front of him. 
and then it happened. Button boxed on lap 8 of the Grand Prix and Schumacher performed the overcut to absolute perfection. Schumacher boxed a few laps later and from there, normal service resumed. Schumacher led every lap from lap 9 to 62 and won the race by 9.7 seconds from Jensen Button in second and Juan Pablo Montoya was third, 21.6 seconds off of Schumacher. This weekend showed that for the first time though, that it was possible to beat Michael Schumacher in some form in 2004, but to do that, it required the perfect Grand Prix. Next up comes the first race of the season where teams typically bring their first major upgrades of the season. Yes, this is the Spanish Grand Prix at Barcelona, but even with these drastic upgrades, Ferrari still held their incredible advantage. Schumacher blitzed the entire field, scoring pole position by 0.617 seconds from Juan Pablo Montoya in the BMW Williams. In the race though, it looked like we were in for a classic. Giano Trulli from fourth place on the grid launched his Renault into the lead by turn one, with Schumacher slotting in behind him in second place and Takuma Sato in third in the BAR Honda. However, much like in San Marino, Things looked a little all too easy for the Ferrari, and at one of the toughest tracks on the calendar to follow, he was able to sit right behind Jarno Trulli, right up until Trulli stopped at the end of lap 8, once again. And after then, much like in San Marino, it became all about Michael Schumacher. And in the end, he won the Grand Prix by 13 seconds from teammate Rubens Barrichello in second, with Jarno Trulli ending up 32.2 seconds behind Schumacher, in the Renault. So, once again, it was a dominant performance by the Ferrari duo. As of right now, things are going absolutely perfect for Ferrari. They are dominating qualifying, dominating the races. It looks like nobody can stop them. But then the next race is where things all went wrong. The Monaco Grand Prix. Finally, this weekend, it looked like Ferrari and Michael Schumacher would truly have to work for a win, as the Michelin tyres had a big advantage over the Bridgestones. This meant that Renault, BAR and BMW Williams were all over the Ferraris this weekend, and this could be seen in qualifying when Trulli, in the Renault, scored pole position from Ralph Schumacher in second for Williams, and Button was third for BAR Honda. However, Ralph Schumacher had a 10 place grid penalty due to an engine change. Michael qualified all the way down in P5, but he was starting the Grand Prix in 4th place. During the race, there was a big crash behind the two Ferraris, when Sato's Honda engine blew up in spectacular fashion, causing a smokescreen leading to David Coulthard and Giancarlo Fisichella both retiring from the Grand Prix. On lap 43, Schumacher had worked his way into the lead of the Grand Prix, however, this is where things were about to take a turn for the worse. Alonso crashed on the exit of the tunnel, trying to put a lap on Ralph Schumacher, as, who I mentioned earlier, had a grid penalty seeing him all the way down the order. This incident brought out the safety car, and in the same place where Alonso crashed, it happened. Schumacher jumped on the brakes to generate heat, but he moved offline onto the same part of the track where Alonso was, which had a lot of dust and which put Alonso in the wall. Montoya had to take avoiding action and in the blink of an eye, it was over. Schumacher turned in on Montoya's front tyre and it spat him off into the wall and that was it. Schumacher was out from the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. So that was where the streak ended. However, as the video is titled, this is how did he nearly win 13 in a row and this race, he probably would have won if he didn't make that mistake under safety car. So we shall continue. Next up was the European Grand Prix and Schumacher was back with a vengeance. In qualifying, he stuck it on pole by 0.6 seconds from Takuma Sato in second, and in the race, he won by 17.9 seconds from Rubens Barrichello in second, with Button 22.5 seconds behind in third. Schumacher was back, and he was back to make a statement. But would he be able to continue that? Will he be able to continue making this statement? Well, the next race was the Canadian Grand Prix, and once again, Schumacher was on pole. But not that Schumacher. Yes, Ralph Schumacher for BMW Williams was on pole position, with Jensen Button in second and Giano Trulli in third. Michael was one second off the pace from his brother and down in sixth place. However, in the race, Michael fought back 
and he fought his way from P6 to take victory from his teammates in second. And this is due to Ferrari opting to do a two-stop strategy as they were better on the Bridgestone tyres versus the Michelin tyred rivals who all had to do three stops. Not only this, but after the race, the two Williams BMW drivers and the two Toyota drivers were disqualified from the Grand Prix due to brake duct irregularities in the rules. So, it was another win for Schumacher, even though he started down in P6. It's fair to say, he was back now. Next up was the United States Grand Prix at Indianapolis, and once again, it was a Ferrari 1-2 in qualifying. But for once... It was Rubino on pole position, and yes, the Brazilian could finally take the fight to Michael Schumacher. Well, no. Schumacher won the race 2.9 seconds ahead of Rubens and claimed his 8th win of the season, and what would have been his ninth win in a row. Next up is France, and this race was an iconic race in the history of Michael Schumacher. His soon-to-be rival, Fernando Alonso, claimed pole position at Renault's home race. But in the race, he couldn't do anything about what Ferrari, Ross Braun and Michael Schumacher had up their sleeve. Alonso ran a very strong three-stop strategy, which was fairly common in 2004. But Ferrari decided to run every single lap as if it was a qualifying lap and opted to do a four-stop strategy. Yeah, that's right. Four pit stops and 70 qualifying laps later, Michael Schumacher and his supreme fitness won out against the Renault of Alonso. Schumacher won the race by 8.3 seconds and Rubens Barrichello was 31.6 seconds off of his Ferrari teammate in third. Next up was the British Grand Prix and once again, this was a weekend where something major happened. Kimi Raikkonen in the McLaren Mercedes scored an epic pole position. This is despite the McLaren really struggling for pace and reliability very early on in the year. And Schumacher was down in P4 due to purposely going slow in Q1 due to some, it's fair to say, weird qualifying rules that they had at the time. But even with a P4 start, the end result was the same as usual. Yep. Michael Schumacher won the race from Kimi Raikkonen in second and Rubens Barrichello was third. At this point, Schumacher had one hand on the Drivers' Championship and he pretty much had his second hand on it as well. But there was still enough races to go where somehow something could change, but it wasn't going to. Next up was the German Grand Prix at the Hockenheim Ring. And despite the lap time being only 73 seconds, Michael Schumacher scored pole position by 0.362 seconds from Juan Pablo Montoya in second, and Jensen Button was in third. Button suffered a 10 place grid penalty due to an engine change for the Grand Prix. However, that didn't stop him claiming what was an excellent second place, finishing just 8.38 seconds off of race winner. Yep. You guessed it, Michael Schumacher. This race is best remembered for Kimi Raikkonen and his spectacular retirement when his rear wing failed at Turn 1, firing him off into the barriers at ridiculously high speed. But yet once again, it was the same result. Michael Schumacher was on the top step of the podium. Finally, it was time for Round 13, and the race that would have capped off this unbelievable winning streak. And what better way to cap it off than with utter domination? Schumacher scored pole position from teammate Rubens Barrichello by only a measly 0.177 seconds. And Takuma Sato in the BAR Honda was in third, 0.54 seconds off of Michael Schumacher. But what about the race? Well, in true 2004 Michael Schumacher style, Schumacher led every single lap, scored the fastest lap and won by 4.6 seconds from Rubens Barrichello in second and an almighty 44.6 seconds from third place man Fernando Alonso. This was sheer domination. This was Michael Schumacher at his best. This was Ferrari at their best. But unfortunately, this caps off the possible 13 race winning streak for Michael Schumacher in 2004. In the next race at Spa, he claimed his seventh world championship. And it was fitting that he claimed it there because this is the same circuit where he made his debut only 13 years prior to winning his seventh championship. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you drop a like down below, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more F1 content. 
So thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I will see you again. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.